And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, it, it is once again Health Talk. John King's right over there. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning. Happy Monday, Peter. Yeah, uh, that, yeah I love Mondays. That is not an ox- oxymoron for me. I, Mondays are happy for me. If so. you already are a moron, it's not an oxymoron. <laughs> Most people think so when they hear that about me. I, what, what can I tell you? But first impressions. Well, we have a lovely lady here in the studio, Pam Lockwood, joining us and uh, uh, from Community Medical Center. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well, and I'm happy to be here, and it's a sunny Monday. It is absolutely gorgeous. And we should just, we should just you know, either flip the lid back or just take our microphones and go outside. Oh, it's hot. It'll be very hot. Oh, we'll find a place place in the shade, John. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, it won't so, seem like work then. <laughs> it, so, Pam, tell us what you do at Community. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetic educator. And what I'm doing right now is I'm the coordinator of the Diabetes Prevention Program, which is a great program that Community Medical Center got a grant for. And we're trying to get the word out to those people that are at risk for type 2 diabetes to get them enrolled in the upcoming classes in September. So how do people yeah, get enrolled? I mean, do they get flagged by their doctors or you just pick them out of the street? Like, you look like you're <laughs> likely to have type 2 diabetes soon. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is that 90% of the people that do have prediabetes don't even know that they have it. Sometimes they find out about going to the doctor, um, having some blood work drawn. Their fasting blood sugar usually will run from 100 to 125, and that's an indicator that they have prediabetes. If people haven't been to the doctor and they're uncertain, there is a website they can go to, and it's called doihavediabetes.org. Take this little test. Wow. It takes a matter of maybe 10 seconds. Answer the questions, and you score by points, and that will help an individual that doesn't know their lab work if they are at risk for type 2 diabetes. You talk about pre-diabetes like it's its own disease, it sounds like. Is it? Does it have its own symptoms? Does it have its own effects on your body? Like, What is pre-diabetes? Pre-diabetes, most of the time people don't know, um, and you can diagnose it by blood work. But if you have family history of type 2 diabetes, you know, somewhere down the line, that's an indicator. Um, If you're overweight, inactive, those are all kind of signs, you know, that maybe you should get checked and see if you do have prediabetes. So so what's the deal with diabetes? I I, I know that for the last 15 or 20 years, we we hear more and more and more about diabetes because you can't turn on television without... 20 different ads for this diabetes medicine and that diabetes medicine and whatever. How did it become so prevalent in in America in such a short time? Well, I think it's pretty complicated. It's not just one issue. It's several things. But one of the biggest factors is people's lifestyle. Um, You know, what they eat, how they eat, what they do for exercise. You know, Mm -hmm. so a lot of things have contributed. I mean, we don't work hard like we used to. Everything is very convenient. Mm -hmm. We've kind of lost our sight for what's an appropriate serving size. You know, portions have just kind of grown over time, and people think that's a a serving size, you know, like when you go out to eat. So So maybe maybe you could just uh, take a second and just describe what diabetes is, because we hear about it all the time. A lot of folks... Oh, yeah, diabetes, I know what that is, and they really don't. So what exactly goes on in your body to trigger, and and what what does diabetes do to your body? Well, diabetes, actually, there's different classes of diabetes. Type 1 is the one usually we used to say it was juvenile, so it mostly occurred with kids. But now we are diagnosing adults that have type 1 diabetes. It's what we call an autoimmune disease. Um, Type 2 is probably the most popular one. And that occurs, you know, for or most common anyway. All the kids are into type two diabetes. <laughs> it's like Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> but type two diabetes usually is insulin resistance. Your body isn't able to take the sugar that you get from the food and put it into the cells where you need it for energy. It stays in the blood, so you have a high blood sugar. So, is it something you could work back from if you get type two? Can you step back into not having type two? Or? You can control it very well and not have a lot of difficulties. Um, that, but the good thing about the pre-diabetes is if you engage in making some lifestyle changes, you can hopefully re- reverse that. A lot of people might get it down the road, so you can really delay it. But that's the good thing about pre-diabetes is so you can. Is is there some magic threshold, I guess, 
uh, that that you I, I know I, I, lo- I know people would love to write to skate right up to the edge, you know, and, and just kind of <laughs> kind of hover there for a long time, like just looking over the ah, look how look how brave I am, uh, you know. Uh, is, is there some threshold where you simply once you got the diabetes, you can't ever go back to being pre-diabetic again? Usually. Okay. Usually that's the way it is. All right. And and what is that trigger point or does it does it differ with everyone? It differs with different people. Okay. Um what we really hope to do though is the people that have the blood sugars in the range of 100 to 125 fasting blood sugar, those are the people we really would like to work with and when they engage in this diabetes prevention program, make some lifestyle changes, we we call it lifestyle balance. Those are the people that can really see some some good results and improve their lab, and that's what this program is is really all about. So um, I might happen to know some people that are pre diabetic. What what are some of the things that you tell them, you know, for day one, what they should do without sound, without sounding diabetes? like a nag? You know yeah. what I mean? Without, <laughs> <laughs> well, to give you a little information about the program, um, I'm the dietitian, so I do most nutrition classes. We also have an exercise specialist that talks about exercise, you know, what you can do, how to do it, where to get started, how not to get injured. Those are two biggies, the eating and the exercise. But then we talk about things that people don't think about in their, their life, you know, things like how do you handle stress? What's your problem-solving skills like? What do you do when you go out to eat? What happens in social situations? So in this program, we don't just talk about healthy eating and exercise. We talk about other things that may be part of your life, and that's really a good thing for people. We're up against a break. When we come back, I, I, if you wouldn't mind, I know that many of our restaurants and food providers are really trying to help out with this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of things are they doing to help all of us perhaps understand diabetes better and not be a contributing factor. We'll talk about that when we come back. Also, if you have questions or with, for Pam Lockwood, she is a diabetes educator right here, standing right here in our studio <laughs> with headphones on, waiting to answer your questions. So that's what a diabetes educator does. She educates. 721-1290 is our number. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll be right back. We are back. This is Health Talk. Hi, Peter Christian. That's John King. Joining us here in studio from Community Medical Center. Very informative, Pam Lockwood. She is a diabetes educator. I asked her before the break, Pam, about um, what restaurants and food stores and grocery stores, are, are they helping out in this? Or are, are they providing more information to folks so just because they don't want to see people become diabetic either? That's true. They don't. And many of the restaurants now will make little indicators on their menus. They may put, you know, depending on the restaurant, they have different symbols, but sometimes you might see a little red heart indicating that it's heart healthy. Um, Sometimes they will say lower calorie or Weight Watcher type of meal. So sometimes they do that. The other thing that I see coming on pretty strongly is they are serving smaller plates. Right. Smaller Um, portions. mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to ask for them. Um, seniors are kind of lucky because oftentimes many of the restaurants will offer senior menus. Same food as the regular menu. It's just earlier in the day and usually less expensive in smaller portions. So okay. those are some really good things that they're trying to work on. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit. You said you're a dietitian, So obviously diet plays a big role in diabetes. Um, I assume activity plays a big role in diabetes. What are some of the other factors that can play a role in someone getting type 2 diabetes? Family history is a really big one. Um, That's probably one of the the biggest factors that people need to think about is their family history. You know, are they active? How are they eating? Those things are probably the biggest contributors of all. Then there's always the surprises of people that are very healthy, you know, their normal weight, their very active lifestyle, and they still have type 2 diabetes. And that's really when you can kind of look at the family history and say that's a big factor for them. Hmm. The majority of the people, though, most of the time are overweight. Okay, gotcha. What about different ethnic groups? There are some ethnic groups that are at higher risk. Um, We know that Native Americans, um, Mexican, Latinos, the Alaskan Indians, those groups are pretty high risk for type 2 diabetes, oftentimes the blacks, too. So, unfortunately, that does occur. But if people are aware of that and keep tabs of their own personal health that helps. So is, 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 is sugar the big enemy here? Uh, it, it just seems to me that refined sugar seems to be at the center of so many of the things that you say 
don't do that. Don't do that. You might get diabetes, uh, whether it's in <laughs> whether. Well, there's there's basically refined sugar in almost everything that we eat. If you look closely at the, you know, at, at the ingredients, uh, soda pop is bad. You know, cookies. Uh, you know, almost, uh, a lot of the processed foods throughout the store. So uh, is that something we should look for? I think the healthier that you can eat, the better off you are. Um, I think it's a big campaign right now with a healthy plate and the new guidelines that come out for Americans that we look at more whole foods. Um, try to make water as one of your primary beverages as opposed to the sugared beverages or the ones that might have corn syrup in it. So I don't think I can actually say, yes, sugar is the cause of all of this. I think well, it's no, a contributing, it's, it's a it's big certain, contributing factor. It certainly is, yeah. But when we were talking about portion sizes, you know, it used, pop used to come in 12 ounces. Now you can get one, some of the drinks that are the big gulp or whatever they are, 64 <laughs> ounces. So Wait, what, what you that? know you're really going to get a lot of sugar I in some of those. Know, I want you to know that... that uh, Peter's uh, holding his Bubba mug, by the way, on. which is about the size of the planet Venus. Hold, hold, hold on just a second. <laughs> Let me just tell you a little story. And you may not have heard this, John. Okay. Several weeks ago, I'm, I'm a Pepsi man. I always have been, okay? People like warm caffeine with coffee. I'm a cold caffeine guy, okay? <laughs> so problem is it's all sugared, right? Uh, I got I got uh, the stomach flu about three or four weeks ago. If you remember that, yeah. Ever since then, every time I drink a pop, I hurt. I mean, my stomach actually hurts because of the caffeine and sugar. And so I have cut back. I mean, way way back on my pop uh, intake. Right He's now, down to what, a six pack a day. Now? No, I'm drinking Gatorade and water most of the time. So. Good job. That's that's not easy to do. So, so good for well, you. Well, well, it's easy when your stomach says, "I don't like this." <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to double you over, and you're you know, you're 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 just not going to feel good. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm lucky in that respect. I don't know. I, I wanted to ask you about your dietary recommendations. Like, are certain foods? Well, we mentioned sugar as being a, a likely contributor, but are there other foods that maybe would surprise people that? diabetics should stay away from? You know, if you have diabetes, what we encourage for people with diabetes or people that don't have diabetes, you know, when you come from the world of nutrition is healthy eating. Um, we encourage a variety of foods and really consider the portions. You know, what does your plate look like? If it's half meat and half potatoes, mm. then I would say back up a little bit. And, and everyone knows that I say, where's the color on your plate? <laughs> the color I'm meaning. Not talking, I'm not talking red coming. meat either, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about do you have fruits and vegetables? Right, so that's right. more whole foods. And we really encourage that and try to be careful with the processed foods and Hey, I've Fast got color. Food. I've got Cheetos. <laughs> Does that count? It's very brightly colored. Kind of like M and M's count. Yeah, something like that. I, I know that's silly. I, what can I tell you? Now uh, we do have a caller on the line here, so grab those headphones. And I believe. Uh, no, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Whoops. Here we go. Okay, stand by. We're gonna get Ray on the line. Okay, Ray, you are on with our guest Pam Lockwood. What is your question, sir? Uh, good morning, Peter. Uh, thank you, yes, ma'am. I was wondering, I read in a book somewhere one time that the sugar, sugar consumption in 1900 was about four pounds per, per uh, citizen. And the uh, consumption in 2000, the cons sugar consumption was about 250 pounds. Wow. Is that right? Well, we'll, we'll find out. So, so thanks for the call, Ray. What do you think? Are, are we somewhere in the ballpark there, or is that... You know, I can't tell you the exact number, Ray, but I can tell you that it has significantly increased. Um, it's one of the biggest factors that we are trying to work on and make people aware of. The new labeling that will be coming on food is going to be indicating how much sugar is in something. So people are going to have a much better idea of what they're doing with the new labeling that will I, be coming. I have some info. I looked it up online. In 1822, the average American ate the amount of sugar found in one of today's 12-ounce sodas. Every five days. Wow. Uh, now we eat that much in seven hours. <laughs> okay. Big well, factor. Well, there you go. Trying now, to make some small changes here. Let, let me ask you something. What happens if, if, if somebody re, uh, finds out that they're, they become diabetic and they're just stubborn? They say, you know what? I'll tough it out. I'll, I'll fight through it. I, you know what I mean? I, I don't care what the doctors say. I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. What can diabetes actually, what kind of damage can it do to you if you don't treat it successfully? 
Unfortunately, diabetes is what we consider a multi-organ disease, so it can have effect on your eyes and your kidneys, um, your heart, the feeling in your feet and your fingers. It's called called neuropathy, right? Mm, Yes. So it's something that you should take seriously and and do the best that you can. It's hard to be perfect, but at least engage in it and keep yourself healthy. It is multi-organ. Now, uh, 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 many people are scared of the needle uh, when, when it comes to, you know, doing injections and that sort of thing. How do you help people get through that? Well, one thing is we can reassure everyone that the needles now, compared to a long time ago, are very small, very fine. Like testing and things mm-hmm. like that, right? And so once they have tried it um, and they can see somebody else do it, that helps a little bit. The other thing that's helpful is if you know you're going to feel better. Um, many times when people are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, they're very tired, no energy, you know, just kind of lethargic. And when they take the insulin and their in- blood sugars improve, they notice a significant difference. So I wanted to um, ask you, so you deal mainly with prevention, not people that actually already have diabetes, correct? Correct. So uh, a lot of the idea behind your institution is to to stop people from getting there. How Does it work? I mean, are you able to prevent that train? Or do you just constantly see people, oh, I know I should do this, boom, I'm in the type 2 area again? You know, I can say that we've had really, really good success with this program. And people that come to class because they want to come and they, I say, click in, this is what I call it, and are willing to say, you know, I do need to make some changes. Um, Here's what I'm willing to do. So we don't, we do not by all means, teach perfection. We just teach progress. And, you know, making one small change and keep working on things really is successful for many people. And that's why it's so fun to do this program. Because basically what you're talking about, this is for life. I mean, this, this isn't just I'll do this for a month and, and, and you know, this is for life, right? Yes, that's why we call it lifestyle. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're going to come right back. 721-1290. We have a few minutes left with, uh, with Pam Lockwood. Uh, Lines open if you have a question or a comment. Maybe you've taken her class. We'd like to say give her a pat on the back. 721-1290 is our number. We'll be right back. 